And welcome back to Broader Financial Future. Hopefully everyone's having a great day so far. And here's to being future millionaires, everyone who's watching this channel. So today I'm going to talk about what you need to know about tax write-offs when it comes to stocks, the way that I understand it. Now, I'm not a tax accountant or a financial advisor, so I'm breaking it down the way that I understand it, okay? And keep in mind, these rules uh, do change, so it's important to do your homework and stay up to date on any uh, tax updates. You know, these things, depending on who's in office, the taxes could change. So uh, I'm just breaking it down, the information that I have received. All right. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. We're almost at that 600 subscriber mark. It's so important that we get there because by the end of this year, I'm trying to get to uh, 600 for next year. We can start going into 1,000. All right, folks. In, in addition, don't forget to smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. So let's begin. So no one wants to lose money in the stock market, but what can you do about it? What if you want to sell out of a bad position? In today's video, I'm going to talk about that and the tax implications. But it's important to understanding long-term versus short-term capital gains. So I'm going to break that down really quick. But first, what is capital gains? So first, we need to know what capital gains is. Basically, when you sell a stock for more than its original purchase price, the result is a capital gain. So, for example, you buy Disney stock at $100 and sell it for $200, you made $100 in profits, creating a capital gain, which is a good thing. You're, you're up in this particular position. Now, any profits that you make are taxable. So, in this case, we're talking about profits, capital gains. The tax that you'll pay on a capital gain depends on how long you held the stock before selling it. So capital gains are classified as either long-term or short-term, and they are taxed differently. So let's talk about long-term capital gains really quick. Now, long-term capital gains are stocks, assets that are held for more than one year before they are sold. So a long-term capital gains are taxed accordingly to uh, gradual thresholds for taxable income at 0, 15, or 20 percent. Now, the tax rate on most taxable uh, taxpayers who report long-term capital gains is 15 percent or lower. So that's something to really know right there. And keep in mind, depending on your brokerage, brokerage account, it will let you know if you have long-term or short-term capital gains. Uh, so that's depending on who, who to use. All right, so short-term capital gains are taxed just like ordinary income. That's up to 37% in 2021, depending on your tax bracket. So you can see a huge difference between buying a stock uh, and holding it long-term versus buying a stock and, and selling it short-term short in, 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 when it comes to tax implications. Now, these are gains, right? So let's get into losses, the dreaded losses, right? So now let's let's get into what if the loss you lost money unfortunately right because sometimes you may lose money. So realize capital losses from stocks can be used to reduce your tax bill. Now you can use capital losses to offset capital gains during a taxable year, allowing you to remove some some income from your tax return. So you have some capital gains you can use the losses to kind of offset. Uh, uh, offset some of the taxable gains or tax or during your ta taxable year. Now, what if what if you had a horrible year? You have no capital gains. You just bought a lot of stocks that sucked, and you're ready to get out of it. You don't want to hold. You're just done. So, if you don't have capital gains to offset the capital loss, you can use the capital loss as an offset to ordinary income. Basically, you know, your working income or whatnot. Up to $3,000 per year if single or married filing jointly. So if you have up to $3,000 in losses, you can write that off on your ordinary income. 
Um, so definitely talk to your tax accountant about that, who's going to prepare your taxes uh, about writing that off. Uh, to deduct your stock market losses, you have to fill out Form 8949 and Schedule D for your tax return. Now, the remainder of a very large loss, for example, say for example you lost 10000 or more, or just over, over 3000 could be carried forward to subsequent tax years and applied up to the maximum deductible amount each year until the total loss is applied. So keep good records and talk to a tax preparer if you need more help. So record keeping is going to be very important, especially if you're losing like big money. Uh, you want to make sure you're, you're keeping track of that. That way you can kind of deduct that um, for the following years. Hopefully you don't lose that much, but if you if you just bought a bad stock and you're just trying to sell out of it, uh, this is good information to know. So if you own a stock that has to become worthless because the company went bankrupt and was liquidated, then you can take a total capital loss on the stock. All right, so there's some more information that uh, we all need to know as well, and that is the wash rule. So if you sell a stock and then repurchase it within 30 days, the IRS considered this a wash rule. And a sale is not recognized for tax purposes. So what does this mean, right? You bought Disney at 100 and it went down to, say, 50 bucks. You said, you know what? I'm out. So you sell it at a loss for $50. And then it goes down even more to, say, $25. And he's like, hey, that's a great deal. So you end up buying more Disney within that 30-day period. Then that's considered a wash. And you're not going to be able to... Um, write it off on your taxes so definitely learn more about the wash rule uh, because that's something where a lot of people make the mistake of thinking they can deduct um the loss so even in december you still have the 30-day rule so whenever you're buying and selling out of, out of position uh make sure you keep track of uh when you bought it and what what other similar companies you're buying into as well because it can have it can have an effect on the wash rule um, in in this particular case. So, well, just be cautious of that if you're trying to deduct um, losses. Uh, that's something I am actually actively doing now. Um, I did a video with AT and T about that. Go ahead and check it out where I discuss using tax write offs uh, and the wash rule to lower my cost basis. But that's pretty much all I got, folks. Um, Thank you for watching and subscribing. Um, it really means a lot. Uh, make sure if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, let me know how you're doing this year. Hopefully you don't have any uh, massive losses. Uh, check out the links in the description to help out the channel. And pretty much uh, these videos are for entertainment purposes only. And any investment may involve risk. And when it comes to taxes, make sure you do your homework and keep good records of what you're buying and selling. That way, when it comes tax time, you can prepare and work with your tax uh, accountant appropriately or whoever you're going to work with. Until next time, everybody, have a good one. Peace.